Hello, I'll be doing an intro or a rundown, run through of Cha's Circuit. This is a uh, all right. This is Cha's Circuit, discovered by Leon Cha while he's in Japan. It is a a periodic chaotic uh, circuit that hosts um, a couple of capacitor, resistor, inductor, and a piecewise uh, a nonlinear piecewise element, which gives it its nonlinear. Uh, properties called Chaz diode. Um, this diode and circuit can, circuit can be constructed in a number of different ways. Um, the diode can be constructed without a diode at all, which merely of just op amps and resistors, or it can be constructed with a combination of op amps, resistors, and diodes. You can replace if you don't have an inductor, you can replace an inductor element with uh, this with capacitors, resistors, and op amps. And um. This is a very versatile circuit. There's a lot of different ways you can build it, and there are also a lot of different variations of it that people have experimented with, played around with, um, to get different, uh, different values for different things, and different chaotic behaviors. Um, the graph here shows the nonlinear behavior of Chaz's diode. As you can see, it's not a straight line. It's obviously not linear. Okay, on to the derivation of Cha's circuit. Okay. Um, firstly, we're going to have to, uh, it's a little bit of a background, background check. You, all right, um, some things to make note of. The voltage in an inductor, the voltage in an inductor is given by V equals L D I yes D I D I D T. Uh, the current in the capacitor is given by I equals C D V D T. And this proof makes use this derivation makes use of Kirchhoff's voltage or uh, circuit laws, which are as followed: um, the sum of all the voltage in a any closed loop in a circuit it will, will always equal zero and the junction rule which is the current going into a junction equals current coming out so if you take the voltage uh, voltage rule voltage law and come around and take it in this loop right here um, you get L D I D T plus V2 equals zero. Okay. Um, you take the junction rule right here um, and get, and you, the current will be moving either this, you can take it as coming in, coming in, going out, or the other way around, going in, coming out, coming out. It's the same thing. It doesn't particularly, doesn't have significance. Um, okay. Um, let's take it. So that would end up being the current in the inductor, so that's I, um, minus uh, the current in the second capacitor, C2, dV2, dt. And you have adding uh, the current in this, this right here, in this resistor. Um, you can find that by using Ohm's law because this is a linear resistor. V equals IR, I equals V over R. You're given R, so we need the voltage. The voltage here is the difference between V2 and V1. So you end up getting one over R, V2 minus V1. Okay. Um, now you take the node here and apply the junction rule, or the current rule here. It's the same as a previous one, except you replace C2 with C1 and the inductor element with uh, the nonlinear resistor. Okay, that gives you G of V1, where G is the current of the nonlinear resistor. And you can get minus C1 capacitor plus 
1 over R. This is the same as this is the resistor, linear resistor as from before, which is the same as above. Okay, and you get that. Rearranging the terms. And you get so di dt negative v2 over l dv2 dt equals uh, it's di over c2 minus g c2 v2 minus v1 G is merely one over resistance, and it's called conductance, which makes sense. DV1 DT equals GC1 V2 minus V1 plus one over C1 GV1, and that is Cha's circuit in terms of uh, the circuit, in terms of circuit components. However, um, in analysis, you really want to limit the number of uh, parameters, parameters needed to create things. So they're generally put in a different form than this. This, however, is very useful in experimental, an experimental environment where you can freely change the values of whatever you want. Okay. Um, they're generally put in terms of x prime equals alpha y minus x minus g of x or something similar. Some people define different parameters. With z, z prime, negative b y plus gamma z, where alpha, beta, and gamma are the mu parameters. Um, G of x is given by, if you recall, from, from this, uh, from this, it's basically taken from um, the slopes of the current and voltage, m1 and m0, and using uh, the BP as the bound, the breaking points. So you find, you separate them to different into sections from between here, uh, between here, and from here to there, here to infinity. Okay, so putting that all together, you get m not x plus m not minus m one x less than negative bp. You get m one x where Oops. Okay. You get negative BP having an equal to X less than or equal to BP. And for the last one, M not X. X is greater than BP. Okay. And that's your the other set of equations. Okay. All right. Um, when you you can plot those equations on a on a computer using the Ronge Kruta method, um, they give you various different trajectories. You can generally the par parameter you want to vary is the resist resistor, is the resistance. Um, if you set the resistance to extremely high value, you get essentially not you get nothing. You essentially get like circuit uh, such as this one except this entire left side is just one resistor so nothing interesting happens however if you go down from the change of resistance lower the resistance from that point you eventually hit a Hoff bifurcation um, just to note the fixed points so fixed points of the system if you, which you can solve by saying those previous equations are zero um, you get for the regions d negative one, d one, which is from here on out, uh, here back, 
and here on. I'll call it that. Uh, you can get eigenvalues of negative, let's call them a p for point, I guess. Um, bp plus minus i cp, where they're all uh, positive, where they're all, these are all positive real numbers. And in the other, the region between them, let's call them uh, d0, a naught. The eigenvalues are b naught plus i c naught, and same thing extends over here. At the Hopf bifurcation, um, as you know, the a naught becomes unstable, becomes unstable, and the sine. Oh, sorry, this is should be negative. Yes. The sign, this sign becomes positive, and you, as you go around past the bifurcation, it becomes a spiral. Or uh, it's called a spiral uh, attractor, which is given by this, by this. Um, changing resistance, lowering resistance from there, you get. Oh no, sorry, that's just a single. That's a single. That single. Uh, a single. A single. Just, Short tractor, and this is a spiral. Um, learn from there, you get the spiral where you can come across a double. Uh, you come across a double, a period doubling bifurcation where the period goes from one to two to four to eight to sixteen, etc., etc., onwards to uh, infinity. And as you lower the resistance even even more from that point, um, you get the famed double scroll tractor, which is given here and here. Um, as you can as in this between within this like period where you have a double scroll tractor, you the trajectory or the number of like pathways between the two attractors can be varied. If resistance is on a low end, then there are less trajectories between, such as this one. There are very few uh, connecting paths between the two attractor, like that, like that. And this one has a quite a few, as you can see. Just got a couple going here and there. This is this compared to this one would have a higher resistance. Uh, okay. And lastly, just like note of some um, funky. Chaotic. Uh, some funky things you can do with child circuit is um, some people have experimented with various values and just gotten some like crazy, crazy spirals. This is like a 15 spiral something. So it's a neat little thing you can pull off with it. Yeah, and um, that concludes uh, this little intro on child circuit.